Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of some books um, that are meant to help you learn how to play jazz piano. Jazz Piano Fundamentals, there's a first and a second edition. Uh, the second is more advanced. And then there's playing solo jazz piano, which shows, you know, kind of a catalog of different styles and ways to play solo jazz piano. Now today I'm here to share something with you that's really not very like sexy. I feel like I'm not gonna get a ton of views, ton of clicks, but that's okay, because uh, it's something I'm really passionate about, which is teaching people to play in minor keys with clarity. And hopefully, uh, every time I teach this, I get a little bit more insight into how to present it so that it's clear, because minor keys are so confusing. And of course, they make up a huge part of the progressions that we, uh, that we see in standard tunes. So I wanna look at minor two five ones in a little more detail, give you some insights. It's not the first time I've talked about minor chords on this channel, um, and you can find a lot of information about playing minor two five one in the second volume of Jazz Piano Fundamentals. So I wanna put my professor hat on, take some notes, and share some of the things that I'm learning um, about how to teach minor two five ones. So the first thing that I would say, which is just important to recognize, is that chord symbols really are designed to work in major keys. Like we live in a major centric universe. And so one of the things that I'm realizing is that, you know, we look at minor keys and we think about, oh, well, we have to change this dominant chord to be these ways. And we only have to change it because we've kind of already uh, we've already created this idea of what a dominant chord sh should be for a major key. So one of the things I'm going to be encouraging you guys to do is to think about different types of dominant chords. And I am very passionate about key centers and determining notes based not so much on your, you know, exactly what the chord symbol says, but on the key center that you're currently in. So one way to view chords is that the basic chord, whatever's notated, comes from the chord symbol. And then the upper extensions, what we're going to add to that chord that's not specifically notated, let's say the 9, 11, 13, is going to come from the key center. Now, in minor keys, this has one more level of difficulty because we don't just have one minor scale, right? Um, and so when I say key center, I really mean from the harmonic minor scale in minor keys. So let's look at how this works. Let's just take a simple, how about an A7? So if it's an A7, those four notes are non-negotiable. I mean, we could like create an altered chord, hypothetically. But when we say A7, that's what we mean, right? Now, if we want to add up our extensions, if we're going from A7, you know, if we're in the key of D major, fantastic. So our ninth is going to be B natural. Our 13th is going to be F sharp. Where am I getting those notes? From the D major scale. Now, if we're going from A7 to D minor, then we want to use the D harmonic minor scale to get our upper extensions. And if you're a little newer to jazz this theory, you might notice that I didn't write an 11th because we don't usually use 11ths with dominant chords because they clash with the third. So now I'm going to need a flat nine and a flat 13. And here I'm saying flat nine and flat 13, but we use that terminology only because we're used to, we live in this major centric world. I don't think we need to think about these as alterations. We just need to think of them as reflecting the key center. Um, so a B flat and an F. Now, it's important to realize it's pretty typical for to include the flat ninth in that chord symbol. It's relatively rare to say A7, 
you know, flat nine, flat 13. But as a musician, we need to know that if we're going to include a 13, it is going to be flat if we're going to a minor key center. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's just take an example of a minor chord. So this isn't even in a minor key center, but if we're gonna have a D minor seven, that's gonna go maybe through a two, five, one to C major. This is like exactly what we invented this minor chord symbol for. And we're very used to grabbing notes from the C major scale to create the ninth, 11th, and 13th. If we're going to go, let's say this is functioning as the three chord, D minor, we're doing a big old progression to get us to B flat major. Now we're typically gonna have to leave off the ninth because it's kind of a weird flat ninth. And if we include a 13th, it's gonna be B flat. A B natural is gonna sound really strange in B flat major. So maybe occasionally someone will write flat six in this chord symbol, but generally you have to know what key center you're in. Okay, so what I wanna do now is look at the chart for a beautiful love, because to me, it's one of the, the worst offenders of not including important information about minor chords and minor two five ones. All right, so here we are. Uh, if you don't know this tune, let me just play it for you. flat seven to a seven to D minor as a musician you need to know this chord is in the key center of D minor it's gonna sound weird if you play it with a B natural as the ninth right especially because you got this B flat seven happening in front of it so even though it doesn't say flat nine, I would really plan on adding a flat nine here. And of course, if you're going to add a 13th, it should be a flat 13th. Now you have a fifth in the melody, so you're probably not gonna add a 13th because of that clash. And even this B flat seven here is belonging to the key of D minor. It's not a diatonic chord, but we're in the overall key center of D minor. I don't think there's any doubt about that. So if you were gonna use an 11th, and, and actually the, you know, got a clash here, but it really should be a sharp 11th because your normal 11th would be E flat. Uh, now, a, the sharp 11th kind of has the actual same problem that it might clash against that F in the melody. But if you were going to use it, then that's what it should be. Um, same issue here. These chords are repeating back to the beginning. And basically as we repeat back to the beginning, we're gonna have a minor two, five, one into D minor. So I don't think there's any way to see these chords other than leading to D minor. Why in the real book it didn't indicate flat nine? I actually don't really know here. <laughs> um, and you can see the flat 13 is actually in the melody. So if you use a natural 13th, you're gonna be creating a clash, okay? Looking at the A7 above it, it's really the same situation. It's A7 resolving to D minor. Again, why didn't the real book write in A7 flat nine? Really don't know, couldn't tell you. Okay, so I'm 
just assessing what key center I'm in and I'm adding in the appropriate um, the appropriate upper extensions for that key center. Now this is a slightly more interesting controversial spot. Why is it more interesting? Because here we're in the key center of D minor, but we have the natural ninth. We have the B natural, which is outside of this, the harmonic minor scale in the melody. Um, and this actually isn't as uncommon as you'd think. And the reason is kind of fun. <laughs> I don't know if it's fun. Nothing about minor keys is that fun, which is that we use the harmonic minor scale to make chords, but then we use the melodic minor scale to make melodies. So this is the harmonic minor scale of D. I'm writing fast, so apologies. It's a little sloppy. And these two scales have one note different. B flat in the harmonic minor, and in the melodic minor, we have a B natural. And by the way, for you classical people, uh, when we talk about the melodic minor scale in jazz, we're only talking about the ascending form. We don't really deal with the descending form. So if you're wondering why I'm not saying anything, we just always use the ascending form for the melodic minor. So there is frequently this moment where what wants to happen in the chords is different than what wants to happen in the melody. So what do you do? I have two options for you. Uh, to me, it sounds weird to play the B na natural in the chord. Not totally impossible, um, but generally I would not. So the two options, and let me see, am I ready? Cool, it's working. Uh, one would be, you can play the B flat in the chord while you play B natural. Here, oh, you should see the chart. So watch my left hand. Okay, if I hammer them together, it sounds bad, but in context, it's just two notes going their own way. Isn't that interesting that a B flat and a B natural can sound okay together? Your other option, if that really bothers you, if you if you just can't deal with that reality, <laughs> I get it, uh, is to leave a ninth out and replace it with a root, or just don't play a ninth. That's totally fine. Last but not least here, uh, this beginning of the tune is just one of those places that really drives me crazy because I think they, from like a theory nerd perspective, I think they did a bad job here. So here they wrote A7 sharp five, which makes a bit of sense because we have the sharp fifth right on the downbeat in the melody. Um, and so it makes sense that they would want to recognize that in the chord symbol. But you and I know, because we're scholars, <laughs> that that F is really not like an alteration for the dominant chord, where we're making like some kind of a weird altered dominant, but it actually is the normal note. That's the flat 13 of D minor. And so if you're playing, if you're wondering, oh, why is it sharp five there? They actually should have written A7 flat 13 or if you have this A7 flat nine, you should know, you, the pianist, should know um, that the 13th needs to be lowered. So, you know, notationally, it's a little bit of a, a strange place. But if you're wondering, why does it say sharp five? I was told that it should be A7 flat nine. It's because they're trying to accommodate the melody, but I don't think they did a good job here. Now, I'd be remiss in terms of this chart if I didn't mention that we have all these D minuses with no indication of what to do with them. Um, and this is pretty common in the real book. They frequently write minor, uh, tonic minor chords without any added um, seventh or, or uh, upper extensions. So what you definitely should not do is play D minor seven. That would be, in my opinion, kind of the worst option. 
Because D minor, because again, we're in the key center of D minor at this moment. And D minor seven is not part of the key center of D minor. Okay. Um, what could you play? My two suggestions. So from the harmonic minor scale, you can make a D minor major seven. Now, that's kind of a very particular sound. And it can be a little bit tense. And so a lot of people either skip that or they resolve that to D minor six. So actually, watch, watch me. You could pass through the minor seventh if you want. But we really don't want that minor seventh because it really doesn't sound like we're in D minor because we're really missing that feeling of the leading tone. We could add both the sixth and the major seventh. And notice in a minor six chord, it's the triad plus the sixth note from the melodic minor scale or the major scale, but it's not this lowered six. So it is kind of a weird one, actually. This note, I don't know if I want to say it comes outside of the key center because key center is complicated, but this one's not from the harmonic minor scale. Okay. Um, good. So here's your, your takeaways just to review again. So remember that chord symbols are not designed for minor keys. So we need to be smart and we need to know that we're not necessarily like altering chords when we move to minor keys. We're actually just adjusting them normally like we would in other key centers. And maybe it's not chord symbols, maybe it's the way that we're taught chord symbols is kind of centered around major keys. Um, so we need to always know what key center you're in. And there might be some moments where it's ambiguous and that's normal and then you can make kind of some different choices. Um, but the one, three, five, seven is, has kind of got to come from the chord symbol unless they just write a triad in which case you need to be smart. And then the ninth, 11th and 13th can come from the key center. I don't know what happened to the rest of the word the, but now, now it's there. Um, and when you're in a minor key, you want to really zero in on the harmonic minor scale. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, if, you've, if you've watched this far, then why don't you comment with um, A flat minor, which is the punchline to this joke of what happens when you drop a piano down a mine shaft. What do you get? A flat minor. All right. I'm sorry you wasted your time listening to that joke. See you later, everybody.